buddy. I'm good. I'm Morning, Cross Point Church. How's everybody? You good? I'm blessed too. Blessed to be here. You guys stand up if you would. My name is Jesse, by the way. I'm one of the pastors here. We're glad you're here this morning. If this if it's happens to be your first time here with us, you're welcome. And uh, I would love the opportunity to meet you before you head out of the day. We got a little gift out there we would love to give you. We'd love to know that you're here with us. No pressure, okay? But if you're out in the lobby, time to come on in and find a seat, get the kids checked in quick, and come in here and worship with us. You guys ready to sing with us this morning? All right, thank you guys for being here. I think he said, are y'all ready to worship with us this morning? That's right, okay. He wasn't as excited as I was, I don't think.
the warm-up, okay? Y'all feeling warmed up now? Me, 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 La, la, la. All right, we're going to sing some worship to the Lord. It's amazing what God is doing within this church, within the lives of his people. Maybe you've had a tough week. Maybe you've come into this place and you're like, oh, my gosh, we're going to sing songs. Well, we are. We're going to sing them loud. We're going to praise the name of the Lord. We're going to lift him up. We're going to exalt him because he is worthy. He is alive. And we were going to praise his name this morning. Amen. Here we go. Sing a little louder. sing loud we're gonna play loud guitars it's what we do we like drums we like guitars we like singing loud but we want to praise the name of the Lord because Jesus is alive and it is because of him that we are alive we've been given so much we just want to praise him I don't know what you're facing but I want you to know that God's love never fails Then maybe pain in the night 
Thank you for seeing with us. You guys have a seat. If you don't mind, in just a moment, we're going to bring our tithes and give our offering. Uh, but as you guys are preparing to do that, I've got a pretty exciting announcement that I want to share with you this morning. Um, but before I do, we're going to watch a little video about that. You guys go ahead.
So here's the thing. We're going to camp. How about that? Yeah. July the 15th is the week that we're going. And let me tell you something. I'm getting to take kids to camp this summer. Are you excited about that? Because I'm excited about that. Listen, if you've never been to camp with a squatty 40-year-old guy, you have, you have missed the whole camp experience, okay? But here's, here's the truth. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, also, I believe there's going to be some kids who have their lives changed for now and, and all of eternity at camp this summer, and I'm really excited that I have the opportunity uh, to be able to take them. So if you have a, ri or a rising seventh grader, somebody that's already completed sixth grade through senior in high school, it is certainly not too late to register your student for camp. The cost is $309. If you need some help scholarship-wise, please let us know that. we got some folks in this room. Now that we're getting ready to bring our tithes and give our offer, I bet there's some folks in this room that will help with scholarships. Scholarships to make kids be able to go to camp and maybe have their life changed by the gospel forever. That's a cool thing for you to be able to participate in. But if you've got a friend, maybe a kid that doesn't go to church here, let us know. All right? Bring people with you. We have currently about 12 or 13 spots left. I would love it at the end of the next week or 10 days if I have to call them and say, look, I know we're booked for this many spots, but we're going to need some more spots. Okay? Wouldn't you like that? Yeah. Recruit some people. Get your student registered. The sooner you get them registered, the more it helps us out. So if you could go online and do that, tell your students to bring a friend with them. We're going to have, I'll take good care of them, I promise. Okay? We're going to have a good time at camp. Let's bow your heads right now if you don't mind. God, thank you for being a generous father. Thank you that all good things, every good thing, stuff we take for granted and forget about, we shouldn't. All of that comes from you. Blessings from your hand. As we give part of it back to you, I pray that it goes to further the kingdom. That you'll use this bit that we give that already belongs to you anyway to draw people to you. God, for camp this summer, right now we pray. God, there's some kids that hadn't even thought about wanting to go to camp. There's some kids that need to go because they don't realize that that's the place they're going to go meet Jesus. God, I pray for those kids too. I pray that you would draw them through the Spirit right now too. God, thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you through music, through the Word as Chris brings it, and through giving right now. We love you, Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. You guys stand and sing with us. I don't know where you are in your faith walk this morning, but uh, this has been a an uphill battle year in the Guatney House. And I've learned a lot of lessons in my faith walk. But one of the lessons that I've learned is that praise precedes the victory. Praise before the victory comes. Praise before it's here. Praise before you can see it with your eyes. Praise before you can feel it in your heart. So this morning, that's what we're going to do. You may not be in the valley. You may be on the mountain. Praise for the valleys that are coming. Praise this morning. Oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. But love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song.
Thank you. 
Amen. You guys can be seated. Think God can't use you? Think he only uses perfectly qualified people? Take a closer look. Moses was not a great speaker. Jonah ran from God. Jacob was a liar. Noah got drunk. Rahab was a prostitute. David had an affair. Jeremiah was depressed a lot. Solomon was rich in wisdom, but poor in lifestyle. John the Baptist was just plain poor. Timothy was too young. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. Sarah was barren. Naomi was a widow. Gideon and Thomas both doubted, and so did Sarah. Peter lacked self-control. James and John were self-righteous. Paul had a short fuse. Well, so did Peter and Moses. Actually, lots of people did. God's army isn't perfect. It never has been. It's the march of the unqualified. Get in line. And all the unqualified people said? Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We all need to get in that line as being unqualified. Say, well, I, I can't because but God will use you. He will use me. If he'll use me, he can use anybody in this place. Amen. That's exactly right. So, and my wife probably said amen to that. But hey, just so glad that you're here this morning as we kick off this new series called At Your Service. And I'm excited because this week I had an anniversary. And you know, when something major happens in your life, it's been said and it is so true that you have your life before that event or before that thing, before that situation, and your life after. And so uh, it's hard to believe, but two years this past Thursday since my accident and I'm still here, and God is on the throne amazingly, right? So, so I just thought, you know, I, I need to do more things that, that I don't normally do, that I enjoy, because, you know, I'm almost 30. And so as I look back on that time, and, and I thought, wow, you know, so Tuesday night, I, went, I didn't get to go any this year until the baseball team was in the state playoffs. So I went to that game, and they won. That was awesome. And I thought, well, I'll go back, you know, Thursday because everybody's working late and all that. And so I just went, and I sat with all my friends, which was by myself in a chair. And so I'm, leaning, I'm sitting back against the fence, and I was texting Chloe, and I heard somebody go, heads, you know, foul ball, right? It was a line shot foul ball, and it hit like 18 inches from right here off the fence. And the people to my left are like, ah! And I'm just going, Pfft. So it hit, and I just reached down there and grabbed it. Yeah, threw it back down there like, what else? You know, what's one more thing? And uh, so I just thought about that, and I thought, good grief. And I, I had this idea of, man, this stuff comes at you, and I don't know, but... Renee helped me with some perspective on that. I said, you know, I was sitting there in this ball. I didn't even pay attention. And it come and it hit. Boom, right there, right in my head. She said, well, your luck's changing. It missed. So <laughs> I thought, well, that's pretty plain and simple right there, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. So anyway, uh, glad to be able to serve the Lord and still be able to serve the Lord even after all that. And, and thank you so much for your prayers. I just want to mention that for a moment because you guys... We're just amazing, and our staff was just amazing in, in picking up a lot of balls and running with that. So thank you for that. And so as we talk about this series at your service, I want to to share a picture with you, not of uh, political concerns. So don't go, oh, he's just trying to. No, it's about a faith thing. President Jimmy Carter, 39th president of the United States, 94 years old. He was turkey hunting 
this past Monday, and he fell and broke his hip. When he broke his hip, they had to take him for surgery and all. He wound up getting a hip replacement. And his thing he kept saying over and over was, but I have to be at church Sunday because he still teaches Sunday school every Sunday. And his plans were to be there to teach Sunday school. Okay, hang on. This, wait a minute. Why would he not just go, I'm glad I'm okay. Because his life is a life of service and service to the Lord. In 2015, he was diagnosed with cancer that had metastasized to his liver and to his brain. Let's talk about faith. Let's talk about service. Let's talk about persevering. Seven months of treatment. And at the end of that, it's cancer free. Now, you tell me where his heart is, where his prayer life is. Does that always happen for people? No, because it's God's will. But I'm saying to you this morning, we need to be in the habit of serving him and doing whatever it takes to do it all for him because even at 94, he understands, man, I've got 94 years, but I'm still going. Until he calls me home, I'm still serving. And so today, that's what we're going to talk about. At your service. You know, it'd be nice if you had somebody, when you rang a bell, sitting in the living room watching TV, somebody came and said, at your service. And they gave you whatever you wanted. Some of you may feel like you're that person, right? Say, hey, pour me another glass of sun drop. Okay. So you may feel like that person. Or if you pull up, it used to be that we had service stations. I worked at a gas station when I was in high school, and it was so awesome to try to and say, fill it up for $20, and you try to stop it right on $20. Boom. I still try to do that today. You don't get that at a service station anymore. Go ahead and fill it up, do the windshield, check the air. Yeah, you don't get that. But we have service industries, and so there's a lot of things about service. I'm going to join the service. I'm going to be in the service. We're going to talk about being in His service. And the first thing we have to do if we're in His service is to believe. We have to believe that God is who he says he is. He does what he says he will do. And his son was the sacrifice for our sin. We have to believe. However, the Bible says even the demons believe and tremble. So we have to put something with that. We have to not just say, well, yeah, I get it, and then go on about our merry way. Because then, did you ever really have a relationship with him to start with? I'm not trying to talk you out of anything this morning. I'm trying to talk you into seeing what God sees in us when we give our hearts and lives to Him and what He expects from us. But we have to believe and serve. See, if we don't bear any fruit, then what are we doing? What are we doing? If we are not producing, if we are only consuming, then what are we doing with our lives? We have to be producers as well. Believe and serve. So I want to share with you this morning from the book of Joshua one verse that you're very familiar with. But I want to read verses 1 through 15 before we get to verse 15. It says, verse 1, chapter 24, Then Joshua summoned all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, including their elders, Leaders, judges, and officers. So they came and presented themselves to God. Joshua said to the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River, and they worshipped other gods. But I took your ancestor Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him into the land of Canaan. I gave him many descendants through his son Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir, while Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I brought terrible plagues on Egypt, and afterward I brought you out as a free people. But when your ancestors arrived at the Red Sea, the Egyptians chased after you with chariots and charioteers. When your ancestors cried out to the Lord, I put darkness between you and the Egyptians. I brought the sea crashing down on the Egyptians, drowning them. With your very own eyes, you saw what I did. 
Then you lived in the wilderness for many years. Finally, I brought you into the land of the Amorites on the east side of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I destroyed them before you. I gave you victory over them, and you took possession of their land. Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, started a war against Israel. He summoned Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to him. Instead, I made Balaam bless you. And so I rescued you from Balak. When you crossed the Jordan River and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, as did the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I gave you victory over them, and I sent terror ahead of you to drive out the two kings of the Amorites. It was not your swords or bows that brought you victory. I gave you land that you had not worked on. I gave you towns you did not build, the towns where you are now living. I gave you vineyards and olive groves for food, though you did not plant them. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River in, the, in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. And then he says this, But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors, the ones they serve beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want us to stop for a moment and think about personally and as a family. As for you and your house, as for you yourself, do you wholeheartedly serve the Lord? Just think about that for a moment. Do you wholeheartedly serve the Lord? Are you as involved as you can in what happens at Cross Point Church? Are you in, as involved as you could be in a small group? Are you as involved as a family in reaching out to the neighbors and the community around you? We have to have that time of reflection. If we don't have that time of reflection, then we don't know where we're going. We're just kind of out there. We need to stop and think daily. What did God do for me today? What did I do for Him today? Did the day get away from you again? Did the day get away from you because you had other things Stop and reflect. And I think that that's one of the things we have to consider when we do reflect. As if I say I believe, then I am more than willing and desire to serve him more. Because he doesn't say, but as for me and my family, we will believe in the Lord. He already believes in the Lord. He said, we will serve the Lord. It's easy to believe. It's easy to say, I believe and not serve. It's easy to not get involved in the messiness of life. Because much against the grain of popular belief, ministry is messy. Ministry is messy. If we think about the ministry of Jesus, Jesus didn't get, go say, all right, where are all the cleaned up, straightened out religious people? Come, that's who I want. He went to those in great need, those who were far from God. And he sat with them and he talked with them and he taught them and he ate with them. And that's what we need more of. Because that is fuel for us. That is something that just keeps us going, that spurs us on to try to do more and more for the kingdom. When we serve him, we can see that and we can feel that and we can see what he's doing. But in that time of reflection, it's 
sometimes best to say, okay, well, let's look at the track record. What has God done already? If I said, I want you to think about something that God has done in your life that was beyond belief. Somebody could not even believe what God did for me. A prayer he answered. Or a prayer he didn't answer. The way that you wanted him to. Or at all. Because that's not what was best for you. But let's just stop and think for a moment. What has he done already? And I think in this passage of scripture, it is a very, very clear example of who God is. When we look at all the I statements, if you just look at those, I gave, I took, I gave, I sent, I brought, I put darkness, I brought, I gave, I sent, I gave. And ultimately, we see in these statements, he ultimately gave it all through his son Jesus. He gave it all. So, sometimes we want to give our I statements, don't we? Well, Lord, here's what I did, but I, Lord, I did that, I, but it's about Him. And those I statements of what He does, and we are just able to hardly wrap our minds around how He keeps up with my life, and your life, and your life, and your needs, and your needs, and your needs, and your needs, and your needs. We can hardly find our keys or our phone going out the door sometimes, right? Honey, have you seen my... And then you get that answer. Where'd you have them last? If I knew that, I'd have them in my hand, right? I don't know. But sometimes just this life is enough for us. But God so loves us that he has taken care of all the things that we have to ask him about. He already knows those things. And so he is the one that gives. He is the one who sends things ahead. He is the one who prepares. He is the one that goes before us. He is the one that meets with the people before we meet with the people. When we're nervous about that meeting that's coming up or that thing that's going to happen or that appointment, he's already there. He's already taken care of it. According to his perfect will. So then we have to ask the question. What actions. Support your faith. What actions support your faith. You know in James it says faith without works is dead. What are you doing with your faith? What are we doing as a church with our faith? We have this gift. What do we do with it? As a child in vacation Bible school, probably somewhere along the line or sometime later in life, if you accepted Christ later in life, you probably would know this song. This little light of mine. There you go. You know that. But sometimes... It's not just enough to have this beaming glow about us as we walk through this Christian bubble. We need to be serving people and serving others and serving in the church and serving our church and serving outside of church. Had an opportunity to be a part of the Embrace Grace Ministry celebration last night. And oh, what an amazing night that was. Of just being able to share and love on people and just be a part of that celebration. Of the lives that are changed because of that arm of caring hearts. And the volunteers from this church that gave of their Friday and Saturday to help make that happen. And just to see the love, you could just feel the love. 
what a great time. What a, what a great celebration of what God is doing and who he is. You know, we have to have our actions support our faith. And do we get it right every day? No. How many people in here are perfect? Mm, no. But our actions should support our faith. And then there's the question of faithful or unfaithful. We know what those mean. Some of us have uh, always had somebody be faithful. Sometimes people are unfaithful in their commitments, in their commitments at work, in their commitments to marriage, in their commitments at home, in their commitments to different things. We know the difference in faithful and unfaithful. Now let's look at it through the lens of if God is looking at you as his servant, and you are to be at his service, meeting the needs of those who would cross your path, meeting the needs of those whom you see in need, meeting the needs in the community. Well, I'm sure somebody else will volunteer for that. I'm sure somebody else will do that. What if they don't? What if they don't? What if that was you ordained at that moment for use by God with that one person and you missed it. What if that was you? At that, that moment in time, that's when you hear that thing. You had one job. You ever hear that? You ever say that? You had one job. We've got one job and it's to serve Him. Serve Him. And one day we're going to be found faithful or unfaithful. God, I was going to, but, but we got busy and we had this thing. And you understand. I know you'll understand because you are a God of grace and love. And, and yes, you will. But when we make a mockery of grace and we live a lifestyle of service only to ourselves and not others, that's when it becomes an issue. So we want to be faithful. And I want to share with you that the church today Needs players, not fans. The church needs players, not fans. I mean, I would every time I go to a, any kind of sporting event, you know what happens? I want to play. You might think that's crazy. Ask my wife. When I'm sitting on the couch, I want to end the game. I want to help coach. When I'm watching something, many times I'm sitting there and I'll be like, oh! She's like, what is wrong with you? I mean, that's just how I am. That's, I won't end the game. I know I only have about 10 seconds worth of oxygen if I get in a game, but it would be good for a short spurt of something. But I won't end. I want to be in it. I don't just want to go and watch all the time. And I think sometimes we look at church that way we go and watch we go and sit we learn but do we get to the inner workings do we get to the place that we volunteer do we get to the place that we're helping change lives like I was able to witness last night what a blessing that's what we're called to do is to play the game not just be a fan but play the game because if you're in it then you should be in it to win it, right? You should be in it to win it. As the mother of James and John asked a question of Jesus, she said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, she says, Lord, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. Now, that's a loving mother right there, right? Lord, if you don't mind, how about letting these guys sit on either side of you? And Jesus answered by saying, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will be on my right or my left. 
My Father has prepared those places for the ones He has chosen. And then in verse 25 through 28, Jesus says this. You know that the rulers in this world lord over it, lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Would you give your life this morning as a ransom for many? Would you give your life for the worst of the worst? Would you give your child's life for the worst of the worst? That's what Jesus did. And so he said, for you, it will be different. You cannot say, oh, I go to church. You need to get your life right. But rather say, I have been touched and forgiven by the one true God. How can I serve you? How can I help you get to another place? How can I help you get to a better place? I mean, as Christians... That's who we are. That's what we're supposed to do. So this series, we just want to reflect on that and see, where are we really? I mean, next time you, if you ever go to another drive through again, like on the way home probably, but if you ever go to another drive through think about how you are first communicated with. I want you to really pay attention to this. Because I think that's sometimes indicative of how church is. Sometimes you get to a place and they go, Can I take your order? You're like, what? Can I take your order? And then you get to others and they give you a full introduction. And they say, hey, welcome to whatever it is. My name is, how may I serve you? And it's the same in this life. Are we willing to introduce ourselves and tell our story to that person that needs to hear it? Are we willing to say, hey, you don't know me, but let me me just pay for that gas for you. I can tell you, you got a lot going on. Let me just give you $5 on your grocery bill. Maybe we can't do that, but maybe we can help somebody carry something out to their car. You know, nobody ever does that anymore. We don't reach out and just help those around us anymore. When's the last time you saw someone help someone carry something out to the car? We're afraid to. You know why? We're afraid somebody's going to go, He harassed me. He sexually harassed me. He grabbed me by the arm. He pushed me. He stole my money. He did this. She did that. Take the risk anyway. Because I have asked, I've been told no a million times, and that's fine. But the other day, there was a lady, she was struggling with a bunch of stuff to carry. And I just said, ma'am, could I just help you? She said, oh, my goodness, would you? She was waiting on someone to ask. Not that it was me, it could have been anybody. But people just bolted right by. And I just felt the conviction of God going, why don't you? Why don't we do this anymore? Why are we not the church outside the church? Why are we not the church inside the church? But you see, we're supposed to serve, not so we can get a seat on the right hand or the left hand side of our Father. We're to serve with humility without motive. Serve with humility without motive. Motive. I'm only going to serve and ask and help because of what God did for me in my life. That's it. That's all. Because I'm going to have, I mean, I've got things in my life that you have in your life that one day when we stand before God, we're going to go, Lord, you know those things I did. Lord, you know those things I did not do. Lord, you know those times I should have. Lord, you know I would have, but I 
Mm -mm. We're faithful or unfaithful. We're serving, we're not. We're volunteering, or we're not. We're helping, or we're not. We're reaching to give someone a hand up, or we're not. Not a hand out, a hand up. A hand out is, hey, here's this. Maybe that'll take care of your issue for the moment. A hand up is here. Let's take care of this right now. And let me just tell you, this is what God did for me. This is where I go to church. This is where I serve. And he can do the same for you. Let me meet you Sunday morning right out front. Let me help you. Let me serve you. How may I serve you? Because it's all about him. It's all about him. It's not about us. It's not about, I think I'm going to do this because I think God would really be pleased if I did. God, are you watching? I'm going to serve because that's what we're called to do. And because we can see all of the I statements, what he did. We know what he's done already in our lives. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. He didn't say, as for me and my family, we will just believe in the Lord. We will just believe Him. We'll just believe in Him. We will serve Him. That means whatever comes our way, whatever He needs us to do to further the kingdom, whatever He needs us to do to help further the church. That's what we're going to do. I just want to encourage you this morning to be a team player and play. Get in the game. Be a team player before the final buzzer sounds. Because we all have a time that's coming that's going to be game over. Come on home. It's time for you to come home, child. And our lives on this earth will be over and we can't go, but hey, I was going to really get involved. Hey, I was really going to, God, I was going to, could, can I get just a little? So we need to get in the game. We need to be a team player. And we need to figure out where, not if, but where God wants you to serve in our church and who he wants you to serve Outside our church. And I want to share something with you. As we close. You would not think. Would just one of me make a difference? Just one? I want to invite you openly. We are here at 7.30 every Sunday morning. And we would love to have some new faces. Come help set up. Come help tear down. Those of you that wait and then help tear down and carry out the carpets and all that, that's awesome. But what one person wouldn't really make a big difference with it. For the past several weeks, we have had several folks just say, you know what, I'm going to start showing up on Sunday morning at 7.30 and helping. And those several folks have been a tremendous blessing. And they have been such an encouragement. And they are so positive, And they are serving. And we're all just pushing that stuff up through there. We're setting it out. And here's the thing. I want to challenge you to come be a part of it if God leads you to that. If he doesn't lead you to that, you're not that morning person that comes and you're like, ah, where does this go? Yeah, we're good. So... But if God leads you to that, come do that. And if you're already serving somewhere, then I want to challenge you this week. Ask someone who's not serving to get involved with you. And you show them the way. Because I'm telling you right now what a blessing it is. What a blessing it is. To have people 
move booths and tables on one day and then help set up on Sunday. Teach our children about Jesus. Teaching our youth, students, taking them to camp. All kinds of things. Greeting, golf carts, cafe. I want to challenge you. Just just let God move in your life. Through this series, He's going to be working on you. I know He is. So I ask you this one thing. Be obedient. Be obedient. All you have to do is see Pastor Jesse. Go outside. Talk to some folks out at the Welcome Center. We can help get you where you need to be. But throughout this, I want to ask you to be praying. God, where do you want to use me? Where do you want to use me? Not if, because we know he uses the unqualified, right? I'm standing living proof of that. But he will qualify you when he calls you. You just be listening. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to Talk about serving you and God, what that means in our homes and our church and our community and our country. God, I pray you just move in a mighty and powerful way through this series. God, that you would just touch hearts and lives and change them forever. God, move in a mighty and powerful way. Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that says, I'm not sure I can serve because I don't have a relationship. I don't yet believe. God, I pray you would just move them to my right their left. And God, let me just share an open Bible with them about what your word says about a relationship with Christ. Lord, we love you. God, and I pray you would just move people to this altar this morning, down front, to pray for whatever it is that you've burdened their heart with. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. And all God's people said, amen. Would you stand, please? about it church don't wait make your way all oh, your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands make your way come on from the moment I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the good Make your way. Praise him, church. about it, church.
hang it out. He's been faithful. He deserves it. There you go. of the goodness of God we're to leave this place and go and be servants of him in all that we do what will you do in your house this week to say we are going to serve the Lord we're not just going to believe in the Lord we're going to serve the Lord I challenge you to work on that this week I challenge you to work on that this week I